This week, uh, Mad Cats announced that they will be no more. Uh, they filed for bankruptcy. This is not like a uh, Chapter 11 type thing where somebody can come in and sort of resuscitate them. I think they're just done. Yeah. Um, now, Mad Cats has been making what I've called like the little brother controllers. Yeah, the player two. Player two controllers for a very, very long time Yeah, now. It's, it's also, I'm fascinated from the business side of things how they got away with this. Um, I guess because there weren't really as strict patents back in the day with, with controllers that you could have basically an off-brand yep. official Nintendo controller. Uh, more recently, I've noticed that, um, and this probably has something to do with, the, with their business, uh, Sony, I think, really cracked down on third-party controllers because yeah. you'd see like all kinds of weird like PS3 stuff. PS4, if you were trying to buy a controller, you kind of had to buy either a Sony one or an officially licensed Sony one. Yeah. Now, it's worth noting that if you're in the fighting game scene, Mad Cats has made some really awesome stuff in the last mm -hmm. few years. They've been really high level with professional fighting sticks and stuff like that. But that is a very that is a very niche market. Yeah. So, um, in any case, we figured we'd kind of give like a crash course of the things that Mad Cats made. They've made all sorts of weird stuff. But, yeah. Uh, Let's take a look at some of their weirdest controllers ever. Yeah. Uh, starting with this N64 one, which is, I mean... I love the mad cats you put back there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I went kind of literal with, with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have animals. Um, yeah, it's all from uh, museumofplay.org, which is a wonderful website full of just like weird archival images. Um, yep. But yeah, like it's it's one of those things where they, they clearly, it almost looks like they took a just a like a Sega controller and gave it a boner. So what's uh, it doesn't about, even really look like an N64 controller. No, that's the weird thing, because the N64 controller is already one of the gaming's weirdest odysseys, or oddities, right? When you look yeah. back at it, you're kind of like, that's an odd thing. But we've seen it so long that we're used to it, so that seeing this weird, elongated sex toy version of it yep. is uh, a little it just uh, looks, disheartening. It just looks like bad fan art. Yeah, it's um, very But then, odd. of course, they also were doing stuff for, uh, for the PlayStation. I love that, like, the... This is know, GameCube, actually. Is oh, no, this is no, PlayStation? This is PlayStation 1, yeah. because yeah. I had a GameCube controller that looked yeah, just like this. Yeah, th this was kind of their, almost their go-to, and you see this with, with yep. different... Uh, different controllers but um yeah they get those weird kind of the ribbing on the side you know yeah for, the grip someone's pleasure there was that uh, big fear through the 90s and even into early 2000s that controllers would just fly out of your hands you need grips and hardcore rubbers and yeah it was like, what do you need all that for? yeah also like i love that like like sony was like ah a nice robust gray yep. for your electronics and they were like yeah but what if it was like pearl colored like mm -hmm. bath beads okay uh then of course there's this Here's gamecube the game. one this yeah. is the one i had yeah yeah which just it looks it looks vaguely medical. It looks like something that having like a doctor's office for like a pediatrician's office. They're yeah. like, oh, don't be scared. This looks like a like a side character in Wally. -E. Yeah. Um, the weird thing is like right down to like the cords. They're very odd. They're, these are like translucent. Um, the buttons were never that great. The C sticks were always kind of a little clickier than they should be. Yeah, you'd um, occasionally get one that was like you'd almost prefer it to the real thing. So that's that my was thing, rare. right? Like with Mad Cat's controllers or, or third-party controllers going back to like the 80s, on Nintendo you'd have stuff like turbo buttons and stuff. Right. So when you lost those things, what you, what were you really getting out of a, a third-party controller, well, right? Well, that brings me to our next point. Everyone remembers the Wavebird, yeah. uh, the oddly named wireless GameCube controller that is just eight batteries. The first uh, wireless controller, yeah. yeah which is nuts. Uh, it's kind of funny that like you don't think of the GameCube as really being a groundbreaking system. Uh, PS2, you know, kind of the winner of that generation, uh, didn't have wireless controllers unless mm -hmm. you bought a Lynx Wireless. Yeah, cats. How many That's different a, cat names are going to be on cat this names. Thing? Uh, but yeah, they, uh, you know, they also have, I think they have turbo what does that on say? there. RF technology. Like, the, yeah, that's the yeah. other thing. They would just write words all over the sides of these things. Like, I mean, it was, it, you know, it was it a does, different it looks, era. It looks like, uh, like biker shorts. Yeah, it, doesn't it really look does. like a controller. It's like weird, funny legs. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then there, there's, of course, this one. This was, I think, a PS2 one. I, I saw this and I had, like, this weird, like, where do I know this from? Right. One of my best friends had this and... It was like you'd get stuck with this. It was good for some games. It was actually surprisingly good for uh, Beautiful Joe. Yeah. Because that's a, just a straight platformer. But trying to play God of War with something like this, because you're hitting, trying to hit shoulder buttons that are like, not they're not tiered. They're just yep. one next to the other. So now, you have to like... I remember they, they specifically made something like that as well for GameCube because in Animal Crossing there were like 20 something NES games mm -hmm. and if you wanted to play with like an old school NES controller the GameCube controller didn't have the best D-pad for that so they put out something like that. So they're very like edge use case scenario type yeah. controllers. I but feel like Mad Cats is also it, they were uh, I guess they owned Game Shark or they bought them or they they distributed them at some point. Uh, here's a controller that I think has like Game Shark functionality. It has like turbo <laughs> buttons and stuff. It just looks terrifying. It looks like Apocalypse in like the new X Men movie, or like just a real, real just upsetting. A fake controller in a movie about a video game that doesn't, you know, written by people that yeah. have never played video games. Exactly. I think they actually used a lot of Mad Cat's controllers in stock photos of yeah. gamers, and then they'd forget to plug them in. Yep. Uh, here's one for the original Xbox. 
Uh, amazingly, this one is this one's like pretty close to the to the source material. Like they really, I, I don't know if it's just different patent laws or maybe something about like uh, domestic products versus international foreign products or what. But yeah, I mean, yeah. let's let's be honest. Like the Duke controller, you might have some nostalgia for it. It wasn't really the world's sexiest video game controller. It's clunky and weird and bloated. And this looks like a melty, don't dilapidated shame. version of it. But yeah. um, there it is. Yep. <laughs> Uh, then, of course, uh, going into kind of more modern eras, here's a PS3 one. I actually, while I was digging around for these photos, there was um, a press release about how there was a certain PS3 software update that rendered a lot of Mad Cats' PS3 controllers, like, non-functional. Oh, wow. And I don't know if it was just, like, partial functionality, like, they could still kind of, you could still push the buttons and stuff. Yeah. Or if they just stopped working entirely. But that's got to be something terrifying as, as a third-party developer that, like, a company can just be like, yeah, your, your, uh, your stuff doesn't work. Yep. Nope, sorry. Yep. Um, here's an Xbox 361. I don't know how you can how you go like further off the off the rails from the la like the last one looked like a better 360 controller than this one does. It just yeah, looks and like, it's what like what sucks about this one is it's like you you can feel it getting closer, right? Like it's like it's it's almost right there. Yeah, except I don't like you have those, those weird egg points, weird little then, pointy cones at the bottom. And it's again just, with the grips, yeah, very yeah. strange. Yeah, they're odd. Um, then more recently, they started <laughs> getting into uh, more PC hardware. Um, the actually, Mad Cat made a, a, a mouse named the Rat. They made That's the what rat. happened. Yeah, I actually I had one of these, and it was like it was kind of cool. Yeah, Not exactly. Like in the same way that like gaming like gaming peripherals or like PC gaming peripherals frequently like they'll look sort of like threatening, and then you use them, and you're like, oh, that's not too bad. Right. Um, it was an entirely modular mouse where you could basically adjust like it was like a desk chair for your hand, and you could like adjust the the resistance and the DPI, and you could have like macro buttons and all that. You could like. Un unclick the scroll wheel so you could just scroll freely if the resistance from that little ratchet thing was was too much for you. Very um, uh, uh, Michael Bay Transformers. Yeah, but the second you go from being like a third-party uh, video game controller manufacturer to a third-party PC peripheral like manufacturer, you're getting into like a much bigger pond because yeah. there's like way yeah. more PC stuff out there. Yep. Um, here's something they did. This is the... <laughs> what? Yeah. Is As this you, like an RC car? I don't know. I don't know. They did have one that I think it's like a Bluetooth controller that I think could be configured to control drones. So you joke, but yeah, this is just, this is weird. This is we're we're looking at like 20, 2014 probably here. Yeah. Um. Most recently they did this thing. Okay, that's that's what what? <sighs> yeah. Is that just switchblades? So that's actually they wanted to take the same approach they took with the rat controller and apply it to uh to a controller. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. So, so they are, made a, it have like modular elements it's a fully, here. Yeah. Oh, it does. Wow. Look. Yeah. yeah so this okay. Is, this is, I think, Bluetooth for use with Android and also with PC. And oh, it's and just, it's got a keyboard, so you, you can, can text all your friends that come to the park and watch you drone. You can turn it into a like just a paraglider. You can watch <laughs> movies on the go. It's just, it's really just kind of a lot. And, I feel and look like, at that like weird Nintendo Switch thing going on in the corner there. That, yeah. Like it's fun. It's funny to look at the Switch now being su successful, whereas like third parties were trying to nail that concept for a very long time. Yeah, and I'm not entirely sure, but I think if you look in the upper left hand corner, that weird little folded up version I think could also be used as a mouse. Yeah. So it's just really kind of. Just jack of all trades, master of none. And if you look in the upper, um, upper left-hand corner, you can see a red cat about to expend his ninth life. Yes. Uh, what here's is like this? A, here, this is like the cheaper version of that last one, but honestly, if you looked at, if you gave this to somebody, you're like, what's that? They'd be like, I, I don't know. So they is got really in, is it a, they got really into drones in their last few years is what you're showing me here. I don't know. Okay. I don't even know. Uh, but as we mentioned, they did make a bunch of Street Fighter stuff. We actually did a series uh, that was kind of us being taught how to play Street Fighter Five yeah. with a bunch of uh, with some esports pros. And I think you used um, this one, right? We yeah, you had like the Chun Li one. I had the Shadow Lu one. Yeah, uh, this thing was rad. It was great. It was it was sturdy and it was like it it worked fine. It was like it was you know synced up to work with PS4 because it had PS4 awesome exclusive arcade clickiness um, to it. Yeah, it, it felt great and. Apparently, the fighting game community actually really liked it, and it did well. But again, like the people who are willing to spend several hundred bucks on a uh, a fight stick are that's a small that's a small piece of of the pie right. chart. Uh, they also did make these ones that were uh, fight pads, which were like kind of just mini mini fight sticks, basically. Uh, I remember uh, Vince Ingenito, big fighting game guy, um, worked at IGN. He was not wild about these. Like he was very adamant that he did not like using these. And I think that was kind of the takeaway from a lot of a lot of the kind of the, the fighting game crowd. It's um, not so, easy to make a video game controller. Yeah, man. I mean, that's it's just that's really not crazy. Yeah. So that's a that's a brief crash course in Mad Cats. Um, 
I don't know. Like, I kind of, I kind of wish there was space in in the market for like weird, like cheapo controllers. Like, totally. Like, maybe we'll see that with Switch. Maybe. I mean, but, pro, uh, pro controllers were what, like seventy bucks. Like, I mean, like controllers aren't cheap. Like, it's it's gotten to the point that it's nice to have a little bit more sort of. Uh, competition in that space. Yeah. So to watch that yeah. go away is a little worrisome because then you're forced to buy first party no matter what.